Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, what is milk oolong? This is a much requested video. Sorry it has taken us so long to get this video out to you people. It's been on our list for quite some time. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what is milk oolong and what isn't milk oolong, because there's a lot of you out there know, there are a lot of misconceptions about this tea type. And then we're gonna be tasting two milk oolongs that we have in stock. One of them is Ali Shan Cream, and the other one is a new tea called Lily Cream Whip. So what is milk oolong? Well, milk oolong refers to any oolong tea which is made with the Jin Xuan variety. So this is a cultivar that was created by the Taiwanese Tea Research Extension Station called TRES number 12, so they give them numbers, but is also known as Jin Xuan, which translates as golden lily or golden day lily. So this uh, tea research extension station, TRES, they create these natural hybrids between cultivars. They create these new cultivars, they test them out, and then if they're happy with them, they release them to the market and farmers and producers can then produce that cultivar. So this is TRES number 12, Jin Xuan. And the reason why it's called milk oolong is because it naturally has a creamier mouthfeel and a milky taste to it, or some milky sort of notes to it. And the main cause for that milkiness is in theory lactones. So there are many different types of lactones. Lactones are compounds which exist naturally in nature, in dairy products, but also in fruits. And they can contribute a variety of different flavors from fruity flavors to milky flavors, depending on the lactone. And it is thought that it is these lactones which contribute to the particular creamy mouthfeel and milky buttery taste in Jin Xuan cultivar teas. So that is what milk oolong is. Let's talk about what it isn't because there's a lot of misconception about milk oolongs out there. A lot of milk oolongs that you see on the market are artificially scented and they come with stories such as that the tea leaves were watered with milk or that they were steamed over milk or that they were roasted over milk. I've heard of variations on the story that involves milk being used in the production process. This is not true, almost certainly not true. I've never ever seen or heard any genuine producer making tea with milk. I wouldn't even know how that would work. So if you hear stories about that, it is almost certainly not true. Most of the milk oolongs on the market that have a very potent milky aroma on the dry leaf. So if I smell these leaves, they have a nice, you know, they have a slight sort of malty uh, smell, but you will know if you smell some leaves and it just has a really rich, ripe, milky, creamy aroma, then it is almost certainly sprayed with artificial uh, aromatics. And you know, then it's a choice of whether or not you want to uh, drink teas that are artificially scented. That's just a choice. But most important is that the tea seller needs to be honest about it and needs to give you the information. Is this an artificially scented tea or is this not? And it's less, it's less common nowadays, but about five to 10 years ago, the industry was rife with uh, websites and tea vendors basically selling uh, this artificially scented sprayed teas as natural. And it came with these stories of using milk in the production process. So that's not true. And if you want to sort of um, have sort of my top tips on selecting milk oolong, I would say to avoid the artificially scented stuff, just basically, you know, smell the dry leaf, of course, if it smells very powerfully of milk or just a very potent aroma. As we know, the dry leaf of tea has a smell, but is not going to in any way emit the strength of smell that you would get with these artificially scented teas. So if it has a very strong aroma, then that definitely is artificially scented. Also, uh, if it comes with those stories, so you know, if you hear the stories of it being watered with milk or it being steamed over milk, then it's definitely not true. And I would avoid uh, those uh, teas as well. And I have to say that currently, I would avoid any milk oolongs that are not coming from either Taiwan or Thailand. So those are the two countries that are really sort of growing, you know, decent Jin Xuan variety teas. China has milk oolongs, 
they are almost all artificially centered. I'm sure that there are some that are not, um, and this may change. So it may be that Fujian starts to produce really good Jinchuan varieties, but as it stands, as of 2020, I would avoid any Chinese Jinchuan or milk oolongs, stick with Taiwan or Northern Thailand. So that's what milk oolong is and what it isn't. Let's dive into these teas. This here is Ali Shan Cream. This one is Lily Cream Whip. We'll quickly scope it and it's going to be very simple because they have almost identical, in fact, they have identical scopes. So season, this is spring, May 20. 20. The cultivar, of course, is the Jinshuen variety. The origin is in Alishan, Alishan Mountain, famous mountain in Chai in Taiwan. The uh, picking will be up to third or fourth leaf and the elevation is 1,400 meters. So what's the difference between these teas? They are made by different producers. This one over here has a slightly uh, deeper roast on it. We also have another Jin Shuen tea called Midnight Sun. So normally we have Ali Shan Cream and Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun being an even darker roasted Jin Shuen. I really like when we get a roast on Jin Shuen because that seems to contribute where you can imagine those creamy buttery notes when you add that roast just sort of um, accentuates those sort of dessert like qualities in the tea. So Midnight Sun is our deeper roasted. We've got Ali Shan Cream, which is a medium roasted, and this year it is definitely more roasted than previous years. And that is primarily because the picking required a little bit more oxidation and therefore you need a slightly deeper roast in order to, to really hold that flavor in and to, to really sort of settle the flavor. And this one here is a much lighter roasted, still roasted, but a much lighter roasted. So this year we've got a very, very light roast. We've got a medium and we're going to be getting our midnight sun. Hopefully we're still, that's still in the roasting phase. Right. Let's uh, warm this teaware up and I want to do this AB comparison. I've actually not done this AB comparison. They are different producers and they have from my recollection, different flavor profiles. So let's dive in and see. You can see the leaf. The look of the leaf is definitely very different. Lighter color and slightly larger ball rolls with little specks of sort of white fluff. It makes me think that this is a little bit earlier picking. Let's put the tea in. And put these scoops to the side. Right. Warm teapots already getting the smell of malted milk in my nose. Let's give Ali Shan a cream, Ali Shan cream a smell. So yeah, it's definitely a deeper roast than our usual Ali Shan cream. If Ali Shan cream is something that you have uh, had before and it is one of our most popular teas, then you'll notice it's slightly deeper, but only slightly. And that roast is going to settle. It needed to have that roast, as I said, to just set it, set the flavors in. And with that roast, I'm getting a slightly more, with that oxidation of the roast, I'm getting a slightly more a fruitier note coming through. It's still milky. It still has those malted milks, but imagine that the malted milk has a bit of toasted barley in it and a little bit of maybe some sort of honeydew melon, like those melon milks. Mm, this has a more sort of um, uh, caramelly. I'm getting, so in this one, I'm having a sort of toasted barley, um, vaguely like a very, very sort of light cafe au lait note happening. Whereas here, it's much more sort of, uh, I would say like childish, a little bit more like malted milks, uh, cookies, caramelized popcorn. And um, there's a slightly tiny bit more vegetal note here. So sort of creamed spinach a little bit, but the predominance is, if you've ever had hobnobs, like oat cookies, 
but blonde oak, oat cookies, not too deeply uh, baked oat cookies. That's what it smells like. Sort of oat cookies dumped into milk. It has a more of a sort of childish quality, if you know what I mean. Sort of cereal-like. Give them both a rinse. And then we'll AD the wet leaf smell and let me just uh, put the temperature up okay so let's go with Ali Shan cream Ooh, definitely fruitier what is that fruit it's sort of like um, tinned peaches tinned peaches and cream tinned peaches and cream mixed, uh, paired with a slice of sort of quite dark toasted brioche or, or um, pound cake, you know, that sort of, that sort of brioche or, or, yeah, what's it, is it pound cake? Just a very nice, light, blonde, slightly vanilla-y, buttery uh, sponge cake and then toasted with peaches and cream. Very, very nice. Okay, here we go. Lily cream whip. Oh, wow, just intense creaminess. I'm getting egg custards. I'm getting sago puddings, a slightly coconut, a lot of meringue, a lot of, um, I'm still getting a, a, a cakey note, but it's more in the sort of uh, sweet, eggy French toast arena still a, a little whisper of vegetal but egg custard egg custard tarts done tart egg custard tarts very very much in that arena that lighter more blonde profile okay let's uh give frog some rinse And then we're going to brew up. Using hot water, 95 degrees. You can do sort of 95 to 99 degrees, something like that. And we're going to give them a fairly decent extraction. Let me know your experience with milk oolong. I dare say many of you out there have tasted some of the artificially scented stuff. We actually used to sell some ourselves due to popular demand, but I kept on walking past it on the shelf and I, it just disturbed me so much that uh, we, had to, we had to stop. So we no longer sell that tea. Um, but you know, it, as I said, if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. But it's the most important thing is that the vendor is honest about it. A lot of the times, to be fair to vendors, they don't know because they're told the stories about, you know, milk being used in the production process and they obviously uh, believe it and then they just um, pass it on. So you can't necessarily um, accuse the vendors of being fibbers, but it is uh, it's definitely, it used to be a lot more rife now. It seems to be that people have cottoned onto it and uh, vendors are a bit more careful about uh, telling these tales. I will bring these to the camera so that you can see the difference. Oh, super. Oh, it's just like childhood for me. My father used to really love uh, cutting sort of Madeira cake and uh, putting it in a bowl and pouring cold milk over it and letting that milk soak in and then eating it. And I just remember that as a, as a child and it has that, that distinct note to it. I mean, it still has a little fruity note, like a little bit of dried apricot there as well, but very, very comforting, childish sort of, you know, you're in that sort of confection, Krispy Kreme confection zone. This is very, very different. Um, just a little bit more adult, a little bit more uh, 
toasty. Yeah, deep toasted cake and maybe sort of a apricot or peach fool. Oh, I was gonna show you the liquor color difference. So here we go, Lily Cream Whip and our Ali Shine Cream 2020, both looking lovely and thick and cloudy. Uh, we've got a lot of trichome action going on in there. Okay. Let me try what well, I've been always going with Ali Shan Cream to start off with. So let's keep going that way. Ali Shan Cream 2020, here we go. Much more milky than the aroma, which has more of the roast. And this is what I mean. This is that roast will settle and calm down. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you from when this was about probably roast about a month ago. So it still needs a little bit of time to settle in the nose, but in the mouth, very, very <sighs> mm. melon milk, papaya milk, fruity and milky. That extra level of oxidation and a tiny bit extra roast has definitely brought out more fruit in this tea than previous years. A little bit of mangosteen. It's in papaya mangosteen. Tropical, um, sweet, slightly tangy, but not acidic fruits combined with malted milks. And a little bit of that uh, French toast or cake, N less toasted, as I said. Right, let's taste the Lily Cream Whip. Mmm, much lighter, more buttery mouthfeel. So we're really accentuating the, the creamy mouthfeel. Taste, again, custards. Um, malted milks, cereal milk. So that sweet leftover cereal milk. A bit more floral as well. I want to say something that's a bit more in the lilac territory, sort of sweet, simple. Lilac, maybe a bit of Parma Violet candy in there, that flavor profile. Definitely much less roast than this one. Mm. This almost has a, a sort of slightly toasted marshmallow note to it. That's the, you're getting a little char, a little char, and then you're getting that milky creaminess and sweetness. This one would just be sort of a plain marshmallow, cereal milk and custards and definitely more sort of salted butter finish in the mouthfeel. There you go, Lily Cream Whip and Ali Shan Cream. So let's talk about the uh, finish and the smell of the empty cup. Texture on it is medium. It still has um, a buttery finish. It still has a, a creamy mouthfeel. Not as much as Lily Cream Whip, but it's definitely there. But because of its extended oxidation and a little bit more roast, it has more of, hmm, dare I say it, a little bit more like a Shifu's pudding type of finish. Uh, Shifu's pudding was our, um, traditional Tie Guan Yin that we've been buying over the past couple of years. I could not find a good enough batch this year. So this might be for those of you who love Shifu's pudding, this may be a good um, option and a, a lot more affordable than Shifu's pudding. Definitely buttery moving to a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a soft grip and slight apricot and 
oregano, herbaceous, slightly cooling, slightly dried fruit, dried apricot. Finish. Let's smell the empty gong da bay. Mm, much more creamy. A custard. Straight up a custard or or or, or um uh, very buttery scrambled eggs. Okay, finish on Lady Cream Whip. A little bit more buttery in the mouth feel at the beginning, but when you uh, when you swallow because it's had less of a roast, a little bit more green, a little bit more sappy, a little bit more fresh, juicy. There is a fruity tang there, but it's more in, as I said before, those sort of honeydew melons and papayas, a little bit lighter. Mm. Definitely more um, fresh, sappy, juicy. And the smell of the empty gong dabe. I expect this to be lighter, but we shall see. Oh, I was wrong. They, you know what? Very similar on the empty gong dabe. This is like a creme brulee with a slightly caramelized top. And this is like you've taken off the caramel altogether and you're just eating that vanilla goodness underneath. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. Creme brulee with the top, creme brulee without that caramel crust. So there you go, you've got the two milk oolongs here, Lily Cream Whip, Ali Shan Cream, Medium Roast and Midnight Sun is coming as long as we approve the final roast. You can see the difference in the leaves here. Definitely a different color. And uh, you know, looks, they're both good pickings, but definitely this one looks a little bit more tender it might be due to the fact that this has gone through an extra, you know, roasting. These look a little bit more tender than these ones here. Both excellent teas. I hope that this clears up what milk oolong is. I know a lot of you have figured this all out, but we still get questions about milk oolong. So I thought I would make the video to clarify everything. I would advise for you to taste always the true cultivar untainted with artificial fragrances. Of course, if you enjoy those, then go ahead, but try a good quality Jin Xuan variety, and I think you'll find that you'll have a much more enjoyable and richer experience. That's it, Tea Heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.